dwellers, I'm Colleen and today I'm going to be sharing with you my thoughts on Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Grow by Jessica Townsend. I just wanted to preface this video by saying sorry um, that we're not posting videos as frequently as we want to slash should be. Um, college is crazy as you all know um, and it's like and like and it's like midterm season and all that stuff. So we've both been just really, really, really busy and unfortunately have not had time to film or edit stuff together. Um, but we're doing our best to, to keep uploading videos for you guys, so, so yeah. I'm gonna do a non-spoilery section first, just letting you guys know my general thoughts about the book and then I'll delve into some spoilers with warning, just because I loved this book so much and I need to talk about it uh, with people. Um, it's so good guys, it's, it's, it's really, really, really good. This book follows the main character, Morgan, as she is cursed at, to die on her 11th birthday, um, as she is a cursed child. Um, not related to Harry Potter and the cursed child, that's another conversation. <laughs> um, but, but she is a cursed child, um, and she's being blamed for all of the town's problems. So if something goes wrong in the town, she is blamed, and it's she's living an awful life because she knows that she is doomed to die. So basically this man named Jupiter comes and sweeps her away and brings her to Nevermore, um, which is this really cool city and she's able to kind of escape her death and learn who she is and, you know, get to experience this cool city and just kind of discover um, herself and the world around her. So yeah, it's it's really really good um i gave this book five out of five stars i know a lot of people have done the same corey has read this book as well she really liked it uh and she was just waiting and waiting and waiting for me to read it and i finally read it and i loved it um and it was also a really good october read for me which was which was really nice um uh yes a lot of people are comparing it to harry potter um which i know gets like a lot of questions because you know, as a huge Potter fan, it's like when something is compared to Harry Potter, I'm like, oh no, 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 it can't be as good as Harry Potter. Or I'm like, I just don't want to compare things to Harry Potter. But I think the really nice thing about this book, and what I've also seen in other people's reviews of it, is that it does give you the feeling that you get when reading like the first Harry Potter book. Not the same feeling you get when you read like Half-Blood Prince. <laughs> it's very different than that. Um, but just kind of the, the warmth and the excitement of of reading like um, Sorcerer's Stone or Philosopher's Stone um, is just I don't know it's just there's something about it it's magical it's mystical um, it's just kind of weird and quirky and that's what's so great about it um, so yeah I mean I can definitely I definitely think that this series will be very successful and the second book just came out um, and it already has like really really good reviews so I'm very excited to read it um, but yeah I, I was hesitant going into it because I didn't I don't I didn't want to compare it to Harry Potter but I think it it lives up to that expectation at least to that feeling um, and the world is really cool and there are cool creatures and and all of that so so yeah I, <laughs> I just it's so good just some other general things that the book did really well um, I loved the characters in this book so much um, I liked uh, Morgan's relationship with Jupiter. I thought that was really cool. It was kind of like a, a Harry Hagrid type relationship, um, just kind of in the way that the relationship occurs and how how it it's kind of structured. Um, yeah, just in general, the characters were very interesting. The world was super fascinating, and I liked kind of being thrown into it and discovering it, just like Morgan was. I think that that's really cool. Um, there were a lot of really good plot points and twists, and the book is very fast-paced, which is nice. Um, it is middle grade, and a lot of people are hesitant about middle grades, but I think that this one, I don't know, it's like reading Harry Potter. Like, it's technically middle grade because she's 11, and like, you can tell it's written for that age group, but it's, it's kind of nice because when you're reading it, it goes really, really fast. So yeah, I highly recommend reading Nevermore. Um, gave it five out of five stars. It was really really good really fast quirky You know fascinating read 
Um, so yeah, I recommend it. It's so good. Go pick up, go pick up a copy. It's so good. That's it for the non-spoilery section. So if you have not read Nevermore, please go read it and then come back and then we can talk about all the cool little things that I want to talk about in it. Bye non-spoilery people. All right, so uh, this, okay, this book, it, it exceeded my expectations. I really, really liked it. As I touched like on in the non-spoilery section, I really, really liked Jupiter and Morgan's relationship. And I liked how it progressed, but then it also was nice because you, you didn't really know fully what he was up to. Um, I didn't really, I was not under the impression that, that her knack was being a wondersmith until like probably the middle of the book. Like I knew it was something like probably magical related or something. Um, but it was nice because he obviously knew and he was not going to tell her anything, um, which was frustrating. And it also kind of, that aspect of it reminded me of Dumbledore and Harry a lot, um, just because of that mentor feeling and like um, Dumbledore not telling Harry anything about his life and like obviously Jupiter's not telling Morgan anything. But I, I think it's really cute just how he's able to like, kind of swoop in and and make her happy and like she just it's nice to watch it's cute how he calls her mog i think it's how you pronounce it mog that's what, how i said it in my head but i like just like that was cute just like how he would give her riddles to like try and find the shadow room in the hotel and all of that stuff like that was cool um and I like the relationship, especially by the end of it, and just how he had faith in her and how she wanted to do everything she could to trust him. But obviously, like, that's hard to do when when you don't know why you're there and, and all of that stuff. Um, I also just, I, I was also a little hesitant on the ideas of the trials um, ahead of time. I... Well, I was picturing like trials as in like a jury and all of that stuff, but trials are kind of like the trials as you know if you are watching this portion of the video, they're just tests, which is which I liked a lot. That gave me Goblet of Fire vibes. It, see, it's like it's a very Harry Potter y book, but it's not Harry Potter. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so like I really liked how there were so many different layers to all of these these the the trials, like I think my favorite one, well, the fear one was really, really cool, right? So, like, the fear trial, when, when, like, she just, like, appeared with witches. And, like, the cool thing was everyone was going through that trial. So, like, she saw people down there. And, like, when she jumped into the, to the pond, like, that was really, really cool. Um, just, like, <laughs> just, like, the image of her, like, coming down and just, like, witches in front of her. Like, she's, like... Oh, okay. We're the fear. The fear trial is now. Um, I really like the one with the uh, the paint and like them all running towards like the center of town. That was really neat. Um, I I liked how it like there were so many like in front of you, and like that meant one thing. If you touched one of those, like you would move on, but it also means something because you just went for the easiest target or like trying to commit like. I don't know, I liked how the trials were so detailed, and I really liked how you you really didn't know the outcome of the trial, and you were kind of there with Morgan, um, experiencing them, which was which was really, really neat. Um, I I liked the world a lot. So I really I really also liked the Gossamer train. I thought that was fascinating, like how you're kind of traveling through time and you can choose whether or not they get to see you. And just like the concept of wonder was really cool to me because um, it's its own magic system but it's so complex and like I don't fully understand it and I think that that's the point but like just her like experiencing the gossamer train and then like being able to go back to her childhood home and like see life without her but then she was able to talk to her grandma and stuff like that like that's that was really really cool um I loved the holidays I loved watching them celebrate Halloween that was so fun and the Christmas competition was awesome like the between like Yule and like the Queen of Yule or whatever it is I don't know Yule and like basically St. Nicholas and it was like the two meetings of the holiday but then they both like ended up winning and then they got snow and presents on Christmas and I was just I really like holidays right and like I don't know that was really cool just another really cool character that I loved and it was just fascinating was Cadence 
Um, just the fact that she was a mesmerist, I think is what they call them. Um, and she's, like, able to, to, like, make people do things. <laughs> Which is kind of crazy, um, and scary a little bit. But she's able to, like, make certain outcomes of situations. She's able to, to kind of, you know, control those around her and in order to get what she wants. And she helped Morgan because she, like, kind of liked her, which was cool. But, like, I did, I did not see that coming. I, again, I knew something was up with her, but I had no idea what. So, I don't know. So, it's like, having that whole cadence reveal at the end and, like, what her true motivations were and, like, why she helped Morgan was really, really cool. So, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I just, I liked, you know, Morgan's relationship with Jake and how that kind of improved. I really liked how, like, his eye patch thing was all revealed, how basically he, you know, wears an eye because he's very similar to Jupiter to where he can kind of see things. Um, and, and see things that are like, you know, the cool, the cool part was like when he was like able to look at the, the teapot and like be able to tell you who touched that teapot and like who, who owned it in their stories, like anything associated with an object or a person. And so he can't necessarily read your mind, but he can see everything that, he can kind of see your story, which is cool. And how it's overwhelming for younger kids like Jack, and that's why he wears an eye patch. Like, I don't know, all these cool magical reveals is, is I think what made the book really cool. I loved Fen. I, you know, Fen was an angry cat and I was there for it and he just, she, she just wanted to go home and it was, it was good. But yeah, and I, I just, I just, it was, it was just a really wholesome, really good book. Um, very magical, you know, I, it's just so good. Like, just step old, you know, just. Oh, so good. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want more bookish content from me and Corey. Uh, we post videos every Tuesday and Friday on this channel, so um, stick around if you want more content from us. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with a new video. Bye!